We need to talk about road rage. Have you ever experienced road rage, either witnessing it or being involved in it? Happens all the time. I had one experience recently, and it wasn't quite recently. It was probably about a year ago. Uh, I was in Nashville, and I was heading home, and I was on Route 40 West. And you know everybody drives like maniacs around the Nashville area on the highways. It's pretty crazy. It's probably that way all across the country, but I've experienced a lot of craziness uh, in the city and outside of the city. So I, I look in my rearview mirror and I see this guy coming, must have been coming 100 miles an hour because I was doing probably 75, just keeping up with the traffic. And uh, he came flying up, so I... I started changing lanes to allow him uh, passage because it was clear that, you know, he wanted the fast lane that I was in. I guess he wasn't patient enough because he almost like pushed me off the road. Like, in other words, he missed me by inches or maybe an inch um, because he was just like determined to like whatever, just like, I don't know where he was going. I was so furious. <laughs> that I actually swung the car back in the fast lane uh, going after him. What I didn't realize is that I cut somebody off behind him. <laughs> so now, now I'm chasing this guy. I don't I know what I, thought, I think I was going to do. Was I trying to get his license plate? Was I going to call the police and try to get him, <laughs> like get a, a squad car out there to chase this maniac down? Was I going to ram him with my car? Was I that, you know, ticked off about it? And then I was really angry because I had cut somebody off behind me and didn't realize it. So it was, you know, time to take the chill pill and just pull over. And I'm supposed to be this Christian chaplain full of love and forgiveness and kindness. And here I am blowing a gasket because of these people's driving habits. But now I'm one of the people. <laughs> so... Road rage is a very, very dangerous thing. So I must tell you and tell anybody listening to, at all costs, always extricate yourself from any situation with road rage because, um, and I don't care if you're 6'5 and you're the toughest UFC fighter on the planet with a bazooka. You don't know what someone's capable of. And people are running around with, guns under their seat, they got knives, um, they've got explosive rage inside of them. And incidentally, the road rage never comes from anything you did. In other words, this guy that ran up on me and he did a nasty thing. I don't know him. How could I be so aggravated with him? It's because there was something else inside of me that I don't quite remember at the time, but something was probably bothering me. It had me a little stimulated, had me a little angry. You know, it's always the something else that's in someone. It's never the incident. The incident is the blow-off valve, okay? That's the steam relief valve on your boiler that just can't take any more pressure. So if you happen to be in their sights, you don't know what they're going to do. They could pull out a gun and just shoot you, and it happens all the time where somebody just got pushed to the brink, and the car accident or the parking space that they thought was theirs, which was, which was so important. But I can tell you that if you went to any prison in America or around the world for that matter and had this conversation with one of the inmates who did pull out a gun and shoot somebody, he would say, if only I had heard this, if only I had listened. So what you have to do is prepare yourself when you're out driving for what are you going to do if you see a road rage incident developing? You're going to get out of there. You, you have to extricate yourself. Listen, you don't want this person connected to you for the rest of your life in jail, in court, in whatever the circumstances. It might be you. You might be the person that blows their, their stack and grabs a baseball bat and, and does something you will re regret. Or they might do something. But... You don't want to be connected to somebody for no specific reason other than rage. So you have to just get yourself out of there and counsel anybody that you know to do the same. Because right now, people are under such stress. 
and they're so wound up that you it's unpredictable what could happen so for the sake of that i would just say please avoid it at all costs i changed my tune i had somebody behind me <laughs> a couple of weeks ago and you know we were we were both you know there's a bunch of traffic that was in the wrong lane because you couldn't tell that it was an exit because it was just traffic everywhere so finally i realized no nah, i'm not getting off till the next exit so i saw the all clear and i pulled out to get in the lane to bypass all this and immediately the person behind me did the exact same thing so what do they say you cut me off which i didn't i didn't even know they were there so i saw all the gestures and then it was some woman so a couple more miles up we're getting off a two-lane exit and she comes barreling up and i said here it comes and i was prepared so as she goes by giving me the most gracious of gestures what do i do that's what I do. Smile and give the peace sign. And one of the things it might have done, and, uh, you know, it might have gotten her even a little bit more aggravated, you know, but one of the things that we're taught in Scripture is in Proverbs 22, if your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he's thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you what does that mean it means humility right just like i was so upset that i cut somebody off because somebody cut me off um you know the burning coals are you know it cuts both ways i mean i felt it for myself i just felt so humiliated and foolish that i got so angry but when you turn something like an act of aggression around to just being totally calm and cool forgiving all of that i think the burning coals is a way of waking them up to say look at what i just did i should feel some shame and humility in this anyway that's it for my uh pastoral lessons today i'm not a theologian i'm just a humble singer songwriter a podcaster life coach and chaplain so I'll catch you in the next video. Have a blessed day.